Hello and welcome to the Customs House Museum podcast. I'm your host Shay, and I'd like to start out by wishing everyone out there listening a happy new year. I hope that you all had a wonderful holiday season. For today's episode, we've had a lot of questions about our residential iguana tiki and about general iguana care altogether. So I'd like to use today's episode as an opportunity to share some of that information with all of you. Now there are lots of different types of iguanas, such as the desert iguanas, which are found generally in Mexico and the southwestern United States. They like to live in the dry, hot areas and eat plant life, insects, whatever they can find. Another example is the marine iguanas that are native to the Galapagos Islands, who feed almost exclusively on marine algae. But the most common type of iguana, or the type that's seen more, most often by people, are green iguanas, such as tiggy. They are native to Central and South America, and they have the nickname the tree chicken because they love to live in the tops of trees. They spend most of their day gathering heat and basking in the sun in the treetops. They're natural climbers, so they have no trouble climbing up and down the large trees. They only usually come down to hunt for food and to move around. They can be pretty territorial, but they will hang out in groups in the trees. Now, the iguanas do have a lot of natural predators out in the wild, including cats and birds. But iguanas do have the ability to jump from very high spots. They can fall about 40 feet and still be all right. And most iguanas will hang out in trees near um, bodies of water. So if they feel threatened, it's common for them to jump off into the water. They are fantastic swimmers. They'll throw their legs behind them and kind of slither through the water, much like a snake would, very fast. In fact, they're very fast on land. Um, most people wouldn't realize it because iguanas tend to seem lazy, but when they want to, they're very agile. Now, baby iguanas have the most to worry about with these predators, um, but they do have the defensive ability to drop their tail. So if a predator is chasing after them and manages to grab hold of the tail, they can drop the tail and continue on without it, and the predator will stop and eat said tail. And the baby iguanas will eventually grow their tail back so it doesn't hurt them. In fact, Tiggy lost her tail when she was very young, and she has grown the length back completely. Now, the adult iguanas cannot drop their tail. It's a common misconception. If an adult iguana were to lose their tail, they would not be able to grow it back, and they actually risk getting an infection that way. And unfortunately, that's a problem that a lot of captive iguanas have. Um, sometimes the owners won't realize it, but they should not be dropping their tail after they're full grown. But of course, when iguanas are adult, they don't need to run away so much as they fight back. Their tails are very strong and are used much like whips as a main line of defense. And iguanas themselves are relatively strong, so they're very capable of defending themselves. And usually they'll try to avoid a fight altogether by puffing up and making themselves look big. They actually seem to grow in size when they're trying to be aggressive and show off. And they'll stick out their dewlap, which is this flap of skin underneath their chin and shake it around and puff up their cheeks and make themselves appear a lot larger than they usually are, which usually scares off their predators or other iguanas who are threatening their territory. Besides other animals, iguanas do have another predator, and that's humans. They're a very common food item, and their eggs especially are considered a delicacy, and so a lot of people who are native to that area will actually go out and harvest iguanas, and the eggs would either be used as food, or if they're fertile, they'll often go to egg farms so that they can end up on the pet market. Now, iguanas do make great pets if you're able to take care of them properly. Now, you want to make sure that they have plenty of room to walk around and stretch their legs. Tiggy personally gets free range at the store whenever she wants to walk around. We let her out, and she gets to go wherever she pleases, for the most part. It is very important that your iguanas have a basking spot. You want to make sure that they have a good heat source, and it is especially important for them to have an up-to-date UV lamp. And you also want to have a heating stone and a red light, so at nighttime the brighter lights can be turned off and the red light and heating stone can be left on so that their habitat area stays warm. Now when I say heating stone, I'm not talking about the type of item that your lizard could possibly sit on inside their environment. That would burn them. 
the heating stone I'm talking about is one that would function kind of like a lamp would. It hangs above your iguana's environment and isn't a bright light source. It can be used at night. You generally want to keep the temperature between 85 and 95 degrees for green iguanas. And we always use a spray bottle for Tiggy, which we suggest that you do as well. And you want to spray them several times a day. This helps with the humidity level of their habitat and helps recreate the natural environment that they would be used to in the wild. It is important that you also let your iguana have the opportunity to soak in the water. We let Tiggy take a bath every day and let her soak in the water as long as she likes. You want to make sure to not let the water get too hot. Lukewarm to a little bit warmer than lukewarm is the best because if it's too hot, the iguanas will burn themselves without realizing it. And if it is too cold, they will become too cold to move or let you know that the water is too cold. The bath is a great way for them to um, keep warm and relax and get a little bit more of that moisture element. Um, they don't really drink water like humans do and other animals do. They get most of their water from their environment and their food, mainly from their food. And speaking of their food, it is very important for iguanas to have the proper diet. Most iguana pet owners um, stray in this area just because of lack of information. Um, some of the worst cases of iguana care is where iguanas will be fed just lettuce. It really has no nutritional value. Green iguanas need a variety of greens and healthy greens at that. Collard greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, bok choy, um, dandelion greens, those are some of the best staples for them. And you also want to include a lot of vegetables, uh, different kinds of squash, acorn squash, butternut squash, bell peppers, okra, green beans, yellow squash on occasion, sweet potato, it helps with their digestive system, lots of fiber, and you also want to include um, some fruit. More the greens and vegetables than the fruit, but a little fruit every day is pretty good for them. You know, mainly what we give Tiggy is either papaya or mango when it's in season. And there's also iguana um, vitamin supplements that you can sprinkle on top of their food. We use the calcium supplement a lot for Tiggy, especially during the colder winter months where she's not eating as much. So every morning when we come to work, we'll take Tiggy over to her sink and let her use the bathroom and let her take a bath and we'll make her a nice big salad. And really, as long as you're handling your iguana every day, um, they can be very docile. Tiggy loves people. She loves attention from people. She has no problem with letting people pet her when she's not sleeping. <laughs> the problem with aggression occurs if you ignore your iguana for too long, you're not interacting enough with them, they can revert back to being very aggressive and defensive. And when you are having to physically handle your iguana, you want to make sure that if you're holding them, they feel supported. Um, if they feel like they're going to fall, they'll start to, you know, climb on top of you to get more secure. You can also use handling gloves or a blanket or a thick fleece jacket to keep your skin safe because iguanas do have those climbing claws and even though th it's not intentional you can and probably will get scratched at some point with their um, claws. So cutting their nails every now and then and giving them a little iguana manicure is probably a good idea as well. But that just about covers the basics of raising a green iguana. If this is something you're interested in and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. You can send me an email at info at customshousemuseum.org. But of course, if there's any issues dealing with the safety of your iguana or anything you're unsure about, the best idea is always to contact a professional, your local vet, to be 100% sure. Because although the facts are the same, there's a lot of varying opinions when it comes to iguana care, so a professional's opinion is always the most important. But that's going to be it for episode 6 of the Customs House Museum podcast. I hope you found this episode useful, or at least interesting, if you're a fan of iguanas or a fan of tiggies. And I hope that you will join us again next time on January 16th. Until then, have a great week and take care.